Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Anjali Ammal Mahalingam Engineering College, Koyil Vanni. I am happy to meet you in the video lecture on solution and discussion on the gate question paper in Mechanical Engineering subject. This is lecture number 38. We are going to solve few problems in the radiation heat transfer. The first question from 1988 question paper for a glass plate transmissivity and reflectivity are specified as 0.86 and 0.08 respectively. The absorbity of the glass is we have four options 0 0.86, 0 0.08, 1.0 and 0 0.06. The transmissivity given data transmissivity equal to 0.86, reflectivity rho equal to 0 0.08. From the radiation properties, we have alpha plus rho plus tau equal to 1. So, the sum of all the radiation properties equal to 1. So, the absorbity alpha equal to 1 minus tau plus rho. So, calculating it is 0 0.06. So, the absorbity of the glass plate is 0 0.06 is the answer. Next question from question, question paper 1991. A, diff the, a diffuse radiation surface has radius intensity independent of angle, emissive power independent of angle, emissive power independent of, independent of wavelength, radiation intensity independent of both angle and the wavelength. So, we have to understand what is the diffuse reflection and the specular reflection. So, this is the diffuse surface, this is the specular surface. So, for the specular surface, when the source, when the incident radiation, it is deflected with the angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection. Phi 1 is the angle of incidence, phi 2 is the angle of reflection, both are equal. For a diffuse surface, so the incident radiation, it is reflected in all directions. So, the radiation here in the diffuse surface, it is reflected in all direction. So, the radiation intensity is independent of angle. For a diffuse surface, the radiation intensity is independent of angle. It is the correct answer. Next question from 2005 question paper. The following figure was generated from experimental data relating spectral block body emissive power to wavelength at three temperatures T1, T2, T3, where T1 is greater than T2 is greater than T3. The conclusion that uh, the measurements are so, we have the graph. So, which of the four statement is correct? The graph is correct because the maximum maxima of E B lambda shows the correct trend. Correct because Planck's law is satisfied. The trend is wrong. The curve is wrong because the Stephen Boltzmann law is not specified. It is wrong because Wayne's displacement law is not satisfied. So, the a similar type of curve, it is drawn for Wayne's displacement law. So, the wavelength in the x axis, E b lambda uh, in uh, y axis, we have the curve. So, if you look at the curve, the difference between these two curves. So, here the peak line is shifting towards the left side. So, here if you look at here, the peak line is shifting to the right side. So, the trend what is drawn, the curve what is drawn is wrong because Wayne's displacement law is not satisfied. That is the correct answer. The next question from 2012 question paper, for an opaque surface, the absorbity alpha, transmissivity tau and reflectivity rho are related by the equation. So, we have alpha plus rho plus tau equal to 1. So, the sum of the radiation properties equal to 1. For opaque surface, tau equal to 0. So, alpha plus rho equal to 1. For opaque surface, it is not transmitting the radiation. So, for opaque surface, tau equal to 0. So, alpha plus rho equal to 1. So, option C is the correct answer. So, next question from 1994 question paper. The shape factor with the themselves of two infinitely long black body concentric cylinders with a diameter ratio of 3 or dash for inner and dash for outer cylinder. So, this is the configuration inner cylinder of area A1, outer cylinder of area A2 of length L. Now, we have the diameter ratio D1 equal to D2 by D1 equal to 3. So, for 
R1, R2 or D1, D2, D2 by D1 equal to 3. For the inner surface, from the inner surface, the radiation is leaving. So, there are two options. Either the radiation is falling on the outer cylinder or it is falling on the same surface. For inner cylinder, so there is no possibility F11 equal to 0. That means, the radiation leaving the first surface falling on the same surface is equal to 0. So, whatever the radiation leaving the first inner cylinder, it is completely falling on the second cylinder or outer cylinder. So, F12 equal to 1. So, from the summation rule, we have F11 plus F12 equal to 1. So, F12, the conclusion is F12 equal to 1. Then, for the outer cylinder, F21 plus F22 equal to 1. So, we have to calculate F21 and F22. So, we take the reciprocity rule. So, from the reciprocity rule, A1 F12 equal to A2 F21. So, F21 equal to F12 into A1 by A2. So, A1 by A2, it is a cylinder. A1 equal to pi D1 into L. A2 equal to pi D2 into L. So, substituting A1 by A2 equal to D1 by D2, which is 1 by 3. So, 1 by 3 is the answer. F21 equal to 1 by 3. F22 equal to, from this equation, F21 plus F22 equal to 1. So, F22 equal to 1 minus 1 by 3 equal to 2 by 3. So, for the inner cylinder, F11 equal to 0. For the outer cylinder, F22 equal to 2 by 3 for the outer cylinder. The next question from 2017 question paper, the MEC power of a black body is P. If the absolute temperature is doubled, the MEC power becomes 2P, 4P, 8P, 16P. So, MEC power is proportional to the temperature to the power 4. Actually, MEC power equal to sigma into T to the power 4. So, it is proportional to the temperature to the power 4. We have T2 equal to 2 times of T1. So, we calculate E1 by E2 equal to T2 to the power 4 divided by T1 to the power 4. So, T1, T2 equal to 2 times of T1. So, 2 T1 to the power 4 divided by T1 to the power 4. This is 2 to the power 4, which is 8. So, MEC power of the second surface is equal to 8 times the MEC power of the first surface. So, 8P is the correct answer. Next question from 2018 question paper. The peak wavelength of radiation emitted by a black body at a temperature 2000 Kelvin is 1.45 micrometer. If the peak wavelength of the emitted radiation changes to 2.9 micrometer, then the temperature in Kelvin of the black body is 500 Kelvin, 1000 Kelvin, 4000 Kelvin and 8000 Kelvin. So, we are given T1 equal to 2000 Kelvin, lambda 1 maximum, lambda 1 equal to 1.45 micrometer, lambda 2 it is changed to 2.9 micrometer. So, from the Wien's displacement law, lambda max t equal to 2898. So, lambda 1 t1 equal to lambda 2 t2. So, substituting, we will get t2 equal to 1000 Kelvin. So, the answer is 1000 Kelvin option B. The next question from 2016 question paper, consider the radiation heat exchange inside an annulus between two very long concentric cylinders. The radius of the outer cylinder RO and that of the inner cylinder is RI. The radiation view factor of the outer cylinder onto itself is, we have four options, A, 1 minus square root of RI by RO, B, square root of 1 minus RI by RO, C, 1 minus RI by RO all to the power 1 by 3 and D, 1 minus RI by RO. So, we take, this is the inner cylinder and the outer cylinder. And uh, we have for inner cylinder, so F11 plus F12 equal to 1, the summation rule. So, F11 equal to 0, because the irradiation leaving from the first cylinder, there is no possibility it will not fall back, back into the same surface. So, F11 equal to 0, F12 equal to 1. So, from the reciprocity rule, A1 F12 equal to A2 F21. So, F21 equal to a1 F12 by A2, this is Ri by RO. So, F21 equal to Ri by RO. Now, for the second cylinder, outer cylinder, F21 plus F22 equal to 1. So, F21, already we have calculated, 
So F22 equal to 1 minus F21 which is 1 minus Ri by RO. So the correct answer is option D 1 minus Ri by RO. Next question from 2019 question paper. A sphere, sphere 1 with a diameter 0.1 meter is completely enclosed by another sphere 2 of diameter 0.4 meter. The V factor F12 is 1.0, 0 0.0625, 0 0.25 and 0.5. So, this is again inner cylinder, inner sphere of Ri, outer sphere of RO. So, we have F11 equal to 0, F11 plus F12 equal to 1, F12 equal to 1. So, 1 is the answer. So, F12 equal to 1. Next question from 2001 question paper, for a circular tube of equal length and diameter shown in the figure below, the V factor F13 equal to 0.17, the V factor F12 in this case will be, we have 4 options, 0 0.17, 0 0.21, 0 0.79 and 0.83. So, we have the, look at the geometry, so we have a cylinder, the top surface is A1, lateral surface is A2 and bottom surface is A3, diameter is D, L equal to D, so length equal to diameter. So, the given information F13 equal to 0 0.17, so for the cylinder, the surface radiation leaving from the surface of top surface A1, either it is striking onto the surface A2 or A3, so it is not striking back to the surface A1, so F11 equal to 0. So, from the summation rule, we have F11 plus F12 plus F13 equal to 1. So, F12 equal to 1 minus F13, which is 1 minus 0.17 equal to 0.83. So, the answer is 0.83, option D is the correct answer. The next question from 2002 question paper, what is the value of V factor for two inclined flat plates having common edge equal width with an angle 20 degree? So, we have answer. So, 0 0.83, 1.17, 0 0.66, 1.34. So, look at the geometry, two inclined flat plate having common edge with uh, angle 20 degree. So, this is the geometry. So, W is the width of the plate. They are touching, they have the common edge here. So, the angle is alpha. So, for this geometry, so, F12 equal to, so, I equal to 1, J equal to 2, F12 equal to 1 minus sin alpha by 2. So, 1 minus sin 20 by 2 equal to 0.83. So, the answer is 0.83. Next question from 2005 question paper, a solid cylinder surface 2 is located at the center of a hollow sphere of surface 1. The diameter of the sphere is 1 meter, while the cylinder has a diameter and length of 0.5 meter each. The radiation configuration factor F11 is 0 0.375, 0 0.625, 0 0.75 and 1. So, the answer is 0.625. We will see how in the next slide. So, this is the sphere of radius 0.5 meter. We are given diameter. So, diameter equal to 1 meter. I take R capital R equal to 0.5 meter and the small r radius of the cylinder. So, diameter and the length equal to 0.5 meter. We take diameter radius equal to 0.25 meter, length equal to 0.5 meter. We calculate the area of the sphere, outer sphere 4 pi r square, 4 pi into 0.5 square equal to 3.14 meter square area of the cylinder. So, for the cylinder, we have to take, uh, we have to take care the lateral surface, area of the lateral surface and the area of two end circles. So, 2 pi r into l in plus 2 into pi r square. So, substituting 2 pi into 0.25 into 0.5 plus 2 into pi into 0.25 square equal to 1.1775 meter square. Now, for the second cylinder, second surface cylinder, F21 plus F22 equal to 0. F21 is the radiation leaving the surface 2 falling on the surface 1. F22 is the radiation leaving the surface 2 which is falling back onto the surface 2. So, 
F2 to equal to 0 because the radiation leaving the surface to cylinder, it is not falling back onto the surface. So, F21 equal to 1. So, conclusion is F21 equal to 1. So, using the reciprocity rule, so A1 F12 equal to A2 F21. So, F12 equal to A2 F21 divided by A1. So, substituting A2 is 1.1775 into F21 equal to 1 divided by 3.14 equal to 0 0.375. Now, we have for the first sphere, first surface F11 plus F12 equal to 1. So, F11 equal to 1 minus F12 equal to 1 minus 0 0.375 equal to 0 0.625 is the answer. Next question from 2008 question paper. A hollow enclosure is formed between two infinitely concentric cylinders of radii 1 meter and 2 meter respectively. Radiative heat exchange takes place between the inner surface and the large inner surface of the larger cylinder surface 2 and the outer surface of the inner cylinder surface 1. Radiating surfaces are diffuse and the, me and the medium is medium in the enclosure is not participating. The fraction of thermal radiation leaving the large surface that is striking itself is 0.25, 0.5, 0.75 and 1.0. So, the answer is 0 0.5. We will see how in the next slide. So, this is the cylinder. Inner cylinder is 1, outer cylinder is 2. So, we have R i equal to 1 meter, R o equal to 2 meter. We have A 1 equal to 2 pi R i into L. A 2 equal to 2 pi R o into L. Then we have for the first cylinder summation rule F11 plus F12 equal to 1. So, F11 equal to 0 because from the inner cylinder the radiation leaving the inner cylinder is not falling back onto the inner cylinder. So, F11 equal to 0. So, we conclude F12 equal to 1. So, from the reciprocity rule F A1 F12 equal to A2 F21. So, F21 we calculate F21 equal to A1 F12 by A2 which is R i by R o which is 1 by 2 equal to 0 0.5. So, for the outer cylinder second surface F 2 1 plus F 2 2 equal to 1. So, F 2 2 equal to 1 minus F 2 1 which is 1 minus 0 0.5 equal to 0 0.5 that is the answer to the problem. The next question from 2012 question paper consider two infinitely long thin concentric tubes of circular cross section as shown in the figure. If D1 and D2 are the diameters of the inner and the outer tubes respectively, then the view factor F22 is given by. So, D2, D2 by D1 minus 1, 0, D1 by D2, 1 minus D1 by D2. The same logic we have to use uh, calculating the shape factor for concentric cylinder and the concentric sphere. A1 equal to pi D1 into L, A2 equal to pi D2 into L. So, we have inner, inner cylinder inner tube F11 plus F12 equal to 1, F11 equal to 0, F12 equal to 1, the same logic, Recipro using the reciprocity rule, A1 F12 equal to A2 F21, so F21 equal to A1 F12 divided by A2 which is D1 by D2. Now, we have F21 plus F22 equal to 2 for the second surface, so F22 equal to 1 minus F21 which is 1 minus D1 by D2. So, the answer is option D 1 minus D1 by D2. The next question from 2014 question paper, a solid sphere of radius R R1 equal to 20 millimeter is placed concentrically inside a hollow sphere of radius R2 equal to 30 millimeter as shown in the figure. The view factor F21 for radiation heat transfer is 2 by 3, 4 by 9, 8 by 27, 9 by 4. So, we calculate area of the inner area, inner area of the inner sphere 4 pi r 1 square, area of the outer sphere a 2 equal to 4 pi r 2 square. So, we have the shape factor relationship summation rule f 1 1 plus f 1 2 equal to 1. So, f 1 1 equal to 0, f 1 2 equal to 1. So, reciprocity rule a 1 f 1 2 equal to a 2 f 2 1. So, f 2 1 equal to a 1 f 1 2 divided by a 2 which is r 1 square by r 2 square. So, I substitute in terms of centimeter. 
So, 2 square by 3 square which is 4 by 9. So, the answer is 4 by 9. Next question from 2015 question paper again shape factor calculation a solid sphere 1 of radius r is placed inside hollow closed hemispherical surface 2 of radius 4 r. The shape factor f 2 1 is 1 by 12, 1 by 2, 2 and 12. So, there are 4 options. We have to calculate shear factor F21. So, A1 area of the solid sphere which is inside 4 pi r square, area of the hollow hemis sorry, area of the hemisphere. So, closed hemisphere. So, the top surface, area of the top surface, radius of the hemisphere is 4 r square, 4 r, 8 r is the diameter, 4 r is the radius. So, area of the lateral surface 2 pi r square. So, 2 pi into 4 r square plus area of the base circle pi r square, 5 4 r square. So, 2 pi r 4 r square equal to 32 pi r square and here it is 16 pi r square. Total it is 48 pi r square. So, the area of the closed hemisphere is 48 pi r square. Area of the solid sphere which is inside is 4 pi r square. Now, we have F11 plus F12 equal to 1 for the inner cylinder, inner sphere. So, F11 equal to 0. So, the radiation for leaving from the one surface 1 is not falling on the surface 1. F12 equal to 1. So, reciprocity rule A1 F12 equal to A2 F21. So, F21 equal to A1 F12 divided by A2 4 by 48 which is 1 by 12. So, the answer is 1 by 12. The next question from 1993 question paper. The radiative heat transfer rate per unit area between two planes parallel two plane parallel gray surfaces of emissivity 0.9 maintained at 400 Kelvin and 300 Kelvin is we have four answers and the sigma Stephen Boltzmann constant sigma equal to 5.67 10 power minus 8 watts per meter square Kelvin to the power 4. We have to calculate the emissive radiative heat transfer between the planes and we are given T1 equal to 400 Kelvin, emissivity epsilon 1 equal to epsilon 2 equal to 0.9 for both the plates emissivity is the same. T2 equal to 300 Kelvin, Stephen Boltzmann constant 5.67 10 power minus 8 watts per meter square Kelvin and uh, we take the Q by A sigma into T1 to the power 4 minus T2 to the power 4 divided by 1 by epsilon 1 plus 1 by epsilon 2 minus 1 when there is radiation heat takes in between the two parallel plates per unit area Q by A. So, substituting numerical value is 5.67 10 power minus 8 into 400 to the power 4 minus 300 to the power 4 divided by 1 by 0 0.9 plus 1 by 0 0.9 minus 1. Remember the temperature should be substituted in Kelvin for radiation heat transfer calculation. So, calculating 811.84 watts per meter square. So, the answer is 812 watts per meter square. The next question from 2003 question paper, a plate having 10 centimeter square area, each side is hanging in a middle of a room of 100 meter square area. The plate temperature and the emissivity are 800 Kelvin and 0.6 respectively. The temperature and the emissivity value of the surface of the room are 300 Kelvin and 0.3 respectively. The Stephen Boltzmann constant is 5.67 10 power minus 8 watts per meter square Kelvin to the power 4. The total heat loss from the two surfaces of the plate, two surfaces of the plate equal to 13.66 watts, 27.32 watts, 27.87 watts, 13.66 watts. So, we will calculate the answer is 27.32 watts. We will see how in the next slide. So, the given area, the given data, area of the plate A1 equal to 10 centimeter square, area of the room A2 equal to 100 meter square, T1 equal to 800 Kelvin, emissivity epsilon 1 equal to 0 0.6, T2 equal to 300 Kelvin, epsilon 2 equal to 0 0.3 and Stephen Boltzmann constant is 5.67 10 power minus 8. So, the shape factor F11 equal to 0, F12 equal to 1. 
So the heat transfer is sigma T1 to the power 4 minus T2 to the power 4. So 1 minus epsilon 1 divided by A1 epsilon 1 plus 1 by A1 F12 plus 1 by 1 minus epsilon 2 divided by A2 epsilon 2. So the numerator 5.67 to the power minus 8, 800 to the power 4 minus 300 to the power 4. Denominator area of the plate, area of the plate is given as 10 centimeter square 10 into 10 power minus 4 and you have to multiply by 2 because both surface of the plate is involved in the radiation heat transfer. So, 2 into 10 into 10 power minus 4 into 0 0.6. Shear factor again area of the plate 2 into 10 into 10 power minus 4 F12 equal to 1 we calculated plus 1 minus 0 0.3 divided by A2 equal to 100 meter square. So, 100 into 0 0.3. So, calculating it is 27.32 watts. The amount of heat transfer between the plate and the walls of the room is 27.32 watts. Next question, 2009 question paper, radiative heat transfer is intended between the inner surface of two very large isothermal parallel plates, while the upper plate, plate 1 is black surface, is warmer, warmer 1 being maintained at 727 degree Celsius, the lower plate, plate 2 is diffuse and grey surface with emissivity 0 0.7 and it is kept in 227 degree Celsius. Assume that the surface enclosure and the steady state condition to exist. Take sigma equal to 5.67 10 power minus 8 watts per meter square Kelvin to the power 4. The irradiation for the upper plate in kilowatts per meter square. The answer is 19.5. If the plate to 1 is also diffuse and grey, diffuse grey surface with the emissivity 0 0.8, net radiant heat takes in between plate 1 and 2. So, the answer is 31.7. So, we will see how in the next slide, all the calculation we do in the next slide. You remember the answer 19.5 and 31.7. So, these are all the two plates. Plate 1 with a temperature 727 degree Celsius. Initially, it is taken as black body and plate 2 is a gray body with the emissivity 0 0.7 with a temperature 227 degree Celsius. And we have defined the irradiation G. The total radiation incident upon the surface per unit time per unit area is the irradiation. Now, the first question is we have to calculate the irradiation of the plate 1. So, the irradiation is the total radiation incident upon the surface per unit time per unit area. So, for the plate 1, what is energy incident on the surface? So, the incident energy incident on the surface in its energy reflected by the plate 2. 2. So, that is actually the, the plate 2. Now, look at consider the plate 2. So, there is some energy is falling on the plate 2 and because of its emissivity and reflectivity, it is reflecting some energy and then it is emitting energy. Because of the emissivity, it is emitting energy and because of the reflectivity, it is reflecting energy. It is a gray body. So, 0.3. So, epsilon 2 equal to 0 0.7 means rho 2 equal to 0 0.3. So, the energy incident upon the surface 1 is equal to energy reflected by the surface 2 plus energy emitted by the surface 2. So, that is what the first statement energy reflected by the plate 2 plus energy emitted by the plate 2. Energy reflected by the plate 2, what is energy reflected by the plate 2? That is equal to energy incident on the plate 2. Energy incident on the plate 2 plus energy emitted by the plate 2. So, second part is as it is. What is energy incident on the plate 2? Energy incident on the plate 2 equal to reflectivity of the surface 2 into energy emitted by the black body 1. So, the energy from the first surface is falling onto the surface. Because of the reflectivity, only portion is reflected by the surface. So, the portion reflected equal to reflectivity of the surface into energy emitted by the black surface 1. So, substituting G1 equal to rho 2 sigma T1 to the power 4 plus epsilon 2 sigma T2 to the power 4. Epsilon 2 sigma T2 to the power 4 is the energy emitted by the plate. So, energy incident upon the plate or energy reflected by the plate equal to rho 2 sigma into T1 to the power 4. Sigma T1 to the power 4 is the energy emitted by the plate 1. It is falling on the surface 2. So, now only reflect because of reflectivity what is reflected is sigma rho 2 sigma t 1 to the power 4. Now, we have for gray surface tau equal to 0 transmissivity equal to 0. So, rho 2 equal to 1 minus epsilon 2. 
So, substituting g1 equal to 1 minus epsilon 2 sigma into t1 to the power 4 plus sigma epsilon 2 sigma t2 to the power 4. So, calculating g1 equal to 5.6 on 10 power minus 8 into 1 minus 0.7 into 1000 to the power 4 plus 5.6 on 10 power minus 8 into 0.7 into 500 to the power 4. Calculating 19,490 watts per meter square or 19.5 kilowatts per meter square. So, the irradiation of the surface 1 plate 1 is 19.5 kilowatts per meter square. If the plate 1 is also diffuse gray surface with the emissivity of 0.8, the net radiation heat takes in between plate 1 and 2. Now, we have to take the equations Q by A equal to sigma T1 to the power 4 minus P2 to the power 4 divided by 1 by epsilon 1 plus 1 by epsilon 2 minus 1. So, substituting all the numerical values, we have to calculate Q by A equal to 31.7 kilowatts per meter square. Look at the calculation. It is mere substitution using the calculator you have to calculate. So, we stop here. So, these are all the books I published in the mechanical engineer subject and you may find the heat and mass transfer is the book. So, you can refer to it for additional information on the subject and I have a YouTube channel where I upload the video lectures on the subject. You can refer to it for your better preparation and pass in the gate examination. So, thank you for watching. Please post your comments on the comments box. So, you can contact me through my mail ID or WhatsApp number. So, we will meet again with another video on solution on the radiation heat transfer, discussion on the radiation heat transfer questions from the gate question paper.